You ready? Yeah. Okay, initially what I was going to do, and I put a machine learning thing on there, was I've seen a couple things recently about how there's computer algorithms that are taking little bits of journalism stories that they're finding all over the net and compiling their own journalistic stories. And a lot of people aren't being able to tell the difference between what's written by a machine and what's written by actual people. Problem with that was it's sort of been going on for a couple of years and it's kind of not really, I, I couldn't find anything that was really timely to talk about it. So uh, I wrote an email to Chris there. I, I had two side by side that I was doing. Uh, this is about the current state of the Republican nomination uh, in the States. So I just took the top six. I, it's initially supposed to be top five, but I couldn't leave Ted Cruz out because he's so fun. Uh, these are in public opinion polls the leading contenders for the Republican race. Number one, this is Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Currently in sixth place, really, really close to fifth. Uh, depending on which poll you're looking at, I just took an average of a whole bunch of different polls and made that my, made that my pick. Does anybody know who Ted Cruz is? Did anybody follow this at all? <laughs> <laughs> Not <So> really. <laughs> I, okay, uh, American politics is fascinating to me. Very, it's very plastic and very uh, uh, based on slogans and hate and emotion and uh, there's nothing constructive coming out of it. It's, it's all this person's bad and if I can prove that this person's worse than me, I don't have to prove that I'm good. So uh, Ted Cruz, number six, he's got about 7% of uh, the polls here. He is, he was born in Canada, in Calgary, and his dad is Cuban just got citizenship in 2005, and ironically, he is wickedly against immigration. Which makes no sense. Uh, I put a Texas senator up there. Uh, keep that in mind for future things to come up. Uh, he is uh, very against abortion. He doesn't believe in climate change. He's uh, uh, sort of a religious fanatic. Very unpleasant human being. So, that's number one. Jeb Bush. Everybody know Jeb Bush? This is uh, W's brother. He was uh, definitely smart Bush of the whole crew. <laughs> uh, and yet, man, does he ever... Uh, one thing, he, there was uh, a rape in a group home of a autistic uh, disabled woman, and she got pregnant of it. And before that had gone too far, he went to the Supreme Court and said, we need to get a, a legal guardian for this fetus because we don't want to do any abortion stuff. We just want to get an abortion stuff. Of course, he was laughed out of court. Uh, when, uh, about back in May, he, they got asked about if he supported, like knowing that we know now, would you have gone into Iraq? Because he said, oh, uh, my... Uh, my number one source for uh, foreign foreign information is my brother, because <laughs> he's he's the best. And he said, "Well, that, that's kind of strange. Knowing what you knew now, uh, would you have gone into Iraq?" And he said, "Absolutely, I would have gone into Iraq. No, <laughs> what I know now." Two days later, after Republicans Republican pundits said, "This guy, I can't believe that anybody sane would have actually come up here and defended going to Iraq, knowing what we know now." And he said, well, I didn't really understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> Two days later, they went again. He said, seriously, you didn't understand that question? I can't believe you didn't understand that question. And he went, oh, I, knowing what I know now, you mean? I wouldn't have gone in for Iraq. Not a chance. So that's a four-day turnaround. <laughs> and this is actually very common for throughout his entire campaign. Is he'll take a stand on an issue, be really wishy-washy about it, and change it. Carly Fiorina, uh, she is, notice no title up there, she was CEO of Hewlett Packard, and she proposed a big $25 billion merger with Compaq to produce hardware. And three years later, because that is such a low percentage fool's bet, and she managed to get it through, the, the stocks in Hewlett Packard plummeted, and she was kicked out of that. Kicked out of uh, Hewlett Packard. 
So she, what did she decide to do? She'd never done this before. <laughs> She'd been a political advisor. She's like, ah, oh, I'm gonna run for Senate. <laughs> so she ran for Senate and lost. And now she's like, well, I'm not gonna run for Senate again. I'm gonna run for president. So that's her, that's her thing. <laughs> again, uh, anti, not necessarily anti-climate change. It says recognize that climate change still exists. But you really can't really, I mean, the science is always fluctuating, and I don't know, I don't know, you don't really want to get into that. Third place, and I nearly forgot this guy. Uh, this is Marco Rubio, Florida junior senator. Notice there's a title on his name. Uh, he's currently third in the polls when Obama put out, uh, they put out Obamacare, Affordable Care Act. He said, this is the worst thing. I can't believe how bad this is. We got to do Marco Rubio healthcare, which was, which really, instead of doing anything productive, made the situation that they were trying to fix worse. Uh, again, very staunch anti abortion, uh, anti climate change, or doesn't believe in climate change. This is a little theme that goes sort of through everybody. Uh, anti, very staunchly anti same sex marriage. They like him because he's sort of his feminine. So they kind of get a little bit of a, hey, we've got a woman in our race, that's good. And, uh, a guy that uh, is, I can't, I can't remember where he's from. I can't remember where his heritage is from. But he's not white. He's not a white guy like the rest of us. So we kind of like him. Number two, Dr. Ben Carson. And now, if you went, the first guy was about 7%. Next one's about 7%. Next one's about 9%. Dr. Ben Carson is sitting at about 20%. He's right up there with the big boys. Again, no politics in his career. Just the doctor. I mean, he, uh, his claim to fame is that he took, uh, you know, Siamese twins, conjoined twins. I don't say Siamese twins anymore, do you? Conjoined twins, and uh, he successfully split them. He's a pretty impressive guy. He also takes, you know, Genesis in the Bible. He takes that literally thinks that evolution is a hoax and we don't know what's going on. Uh, he's not a very bright guy. Uh, you know that uh, shooting that took place? I don't know if anybody heard about his comments about the shooting that took place. Uh, so they asked him, hey, what do you think about this shooting that took place? Because it starts a lot of, uh, like, gun, what do you call that? About, yeah, gun control laws and stuff like that. So it's, it's a big political issue, of course, it really comes up. And he said, well, if it's me in that place, I would have I would have taken that. I would have told everybody just to attack him. Because he can't kill all of us. Which is wickedly insensitive to all the people that just got murdered. And he's not in that situation. What a donk. So anyway, <laughs> that's Dr. Ben Carson. I've got a couple of quotes here. <laughs> Dr. Ben Carson. Uh, well, my thoughts are that marriage is between a man and a woman. It's well established, fundamental pillar of society, and no group, uh, be they gays, be they NAMLA, I don't know who that is, be they people who believe in bestiality, it doesn't matter what they are, they don't get to change the definition. Yikes. Here's another one, because 9-11 is uh, an isolated incident. He's talking about why Obamacare is worse than 9-11. 9-11 <laughs> is an isolated incident. Things that are isolated, if you're supposed to think they're fundamentally blah, 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 it doesn't matter, he thinks Obamacare is worse than 9-11. This guy currently leading the polls, depending on what you believe or what you see, uh, he's about 19 to about 27% right now. Mm. Uh, I think he's an easy guy to pick on. <laughs> I think you can print, like, I can go, uh, hey, Steve, knock, knock. Where? Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's just sort of the punchline all on himself. So I don't really want to pick on him too much, but there's, there's sort of an overarching theme. Ah, screw it, let's a couple of uh, concept of global warming was created by and for the Chinese in order to make U.S. manufacturing non-competitive. Actual Donald Trump quote, created by the Chinese. I will build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. <laughs> and I'll build them very inexpensively. I'll build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I'll make Mexico pay for that wall, mark my words. Let's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> go with more. Uh, you know, it really doesn't matter with the media, right? As long as you've got a young and beautiful piece of ass. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actual quotes, Donald yeah, Trump, actual quotes. Yeah. 
Wow. And, then, and then my favorite is him cutting into Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell's disgusting both inside and out. You take a look at her, she's a slob. She talks like a truck driver, she doesn't have her facts, and she'll say anything that comes to her mind. Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. That's pretty ironic, right? So, if you notice, out of the top six, and I sort of included Cruz in there uh, frivolously, top six, there were only two that were established politicians, only two that were senators. That's Cruz at the beginning, and that's Marco Rubio. The rest are outsiders. And what's happening right now with Republican and Republican views, or even democracy in general in the states, is that there's such a huge mistrust of what's happening in government. And to me, that is a sign that democracy is crumbling. We can't have distrust in our government, or that strong of distrust in our government, where it doesn't matter what these, what these jokers are saying, because they're outsiders and because they're anti-establishment, that's why they're getting popular. Uh, it should be fundamental to our democracy that our politicians represent us, they represent our views, that if we don't trust them, we have the ability to get rid of them and get people that represent our views in there. The fact that we are feeling helpless and we have to turn to these guys <coughs> is a very bad sign. Thank you.